Te madring kila ma tulunga palamit ya daya modhadiko Maudyang na kaniva sinang bhaya pararva kya riva prartitaha Nili shambara nila mambara talang jambu palamayayang Thang mun changir mambarang param rishan lambo darapatumam Namaste. Welcome to today's episode of Daily Sutra. So today I want to go over the second Jnana Shlokam from Sri Lalita Sahasranama. Om Aruna Karuna Tarangitakshi Dritta Pashan Kusha Pushpabana Chapam Animadi Biravritam Mayukahai Raham Nityeva Vibhava Ye Bhavani So this is a wonderful shloka. Uh, there are two others, dhyana shlokams, that begin Lalita Sahasranamam. But this one is by far the most popular. And tradition has it that it was composed by Shankaracharya. So let's look into this. Arunang means red, like the rising sun at dawn. And red is the color of compassion. So the Devi's mood is one of compassion and love for all living creatures, just like a mother. Huh? Mother wants to see all her children prosper and advance in spiritual life, at least if she's a good mother. <laughs> and she is. She's the best mother, the mother of the whole universe. So Arunang... Karuna means directly compassion. So by compassion, she attracts all the living beings in the universe. Uh, everybody in this universe is more or less in suffering condition, except those who have taken shelter of her all-encompassing compassion. So this verse is just the highest view of the Universal Mother. Tarunangitakshim, the waves of compassion emanating continuously from her. We made a song called Tears of Compassion, Lavender Tears. And uh, here's a link that goes to the recording and the explanation. Dhrita means supported by. She's not alone. She has power. And she has many, many expansions of shaktis and also soldiers and weapons. And so the shloka is going to go into the weapons that she holds in her four hands. Pasha means noose. A pashu actually means rope. Uh, but by this noose, she drags one from one life to the next by her law of karma. Karma is the universal law. It's unbreakable. It's very subtle. And it's inconceivable. It's beyond human intelligence. The reason for that is the seeds or the roots of the karma that we experience in this life come from our actions in previous lives. And since we don't know what those are, 
Uh, we can guess, but mm, it's not really accurate. So we can never really predict. Even with uh, astrology, it's very difficult to make accurate predictions of one's karma, one's destiny. Next, she has the Ankusha. Ankusha means an elephant goad. And she pushes with this goad, huh? like an elephant driver. And this is suffering. She creates suffering so that we can learn that, hey, being an individual is not such a great idea. <laughs> because we have to bear the results of our activities. And our activities are often ignorant and sinful and wrong. So by this goad, she pushes us to uh, approach her for yoga and self-realization. And the Kundalini Yoga, being the highest form of yoga, the uh, Kula, Kula Yoga, Kula means the path. And she is the path. And uh, Kula also means family. So because she is the mother, she's our real family. And we should approach her in loving mood and take advantage of the opportunity she gives by teaching the various forms of yoga. Then Pushpa, Pushpa Bana. Huh? Bana means arrows, Pushpa means flowers. She has arrows made of flowers. What does that mean? She is like Cupid. She can let loose an arrow that strikes the heart and really brings everybody under her control. And of course, these symbolize the senses and the mind and desire. Just like Cupid uh, aims his arrows at the heart, but she can aim them anywhere at any of the senses, including the mind. And in this way, she defeats and captivates all the living beings who eventually come to her for release. Chapam. She has a bow. And the bow is made of sugar cane. Huh? A stalk of sugar cane. How is this possible? Well, for her, anything is possible. But the symbolism is that this bow is sweetness. And the arrows are made of flowers, which are also sweet and beautiful and enjoyable. So she is the topmost enjoyable thing. Uh, her mercy, her compassion is so beautiful and wonderful. Her mastery of all the arts. Uh, she has 108 arts of spirituality that she is the absolute mistress of being the creator of all of them. You know, there's a story that Mother Saraswati, who is supposed to be the greatest musician, uh, she plays the veena. And when uh, Mother starts speaking in praise of Shiva, her eternal consort, her voice is so musical and so beautiful that Mother Saraswati just sort of quietly puts her vena away. <laughs> because no music, no matter how sweet, can compare with the sweetness of Lalita's voice. Then, Animadi Bhir means the eight cities beginning with anima, anima, mahima, garima, lagima, prapti, prakamya, ishtva, and vastva. Vastva and all these cities are yogic powers by means of which one can uh, travel, can become lighter than a feather or heavier than a stone, or one can, can reach and grab objects that are far away 
by subtle means. One can, uh, for example, control another person's mind uh, by means of these siddhis. Uh, one can actually even break the laws of nature and do really whatever one desires. And these great siddhis are sought after very much by yogis and demigods who want to control and enjoy the physical world. The problem is, <laughs> unless they are engaged in the service of Lalita, they accrue to our karma and they exhaust all of our good karmic results. This leads to falling down from whatever high position one may obtain by them and back into ordinary life. So the lesson is, don't mess with cities. Don't go through all that trouble to attain something that's just temporary. Now, if she wants you to have a city and use it in her service, that's a different thing. But one has to be very cautious not to get carried away. So after siddhis, mayukhai, a ray or beam of light. Uh, she is the light that illuminates the whole universe as consciousness. We've gone over this before that she is actually consciousness. So she is the root of everything because without consciousness, <laughs> There is nothing. So everyone depends on her in all circumstances, even though most of us, unfortunately, don't realize it. But she is the root of creation, the root of consciousness, the root of desire, really the cause of everything. And then, Ahang Ityeva, I am like this. In other words, we are like her. In fact, we are her, or actually she is us. <laughs> Everything that exists is created by her in her own image. And so everyone is following her path in all respects. Then finally, Vibhavaye. Bhavaning. Let me attain a state of beatitude. Huh? She is in this state. That's why she's known as Bhavani. Bhavani is one of her most well-known names. I have a friend in Nepal whose name is Bhavani. And uh, this is a great blessing to have that name. It also means that we can become like her. Bhava means to become or to uh, develop in such a way that we also have this exalted state of transcendental bliss. How do we do that? We become her assistants in pleasing Lord Shiva. And then out of her grace, out of her gracious compassion, she blesses us with the highest states of bliss. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.